What's up, Scavabers? I know those times are hard. We are stuck inside. Our gear just screams to get out, get in the sky. Although since I'm a Canadian, even though the times were different, well, I wouldn't be able to jump anyways because of that. But nowadays, skydivers are spending a lot of time online trying to find content and videos to watch and learn in order to improve their skydiving skills. And over the last days, there has been a lot of videos posted specifically about safety day content. And there's one that really stood out for me. So I wanted to discuss with you about that one video that was very interesting for me. Do you wanna know which one it is? Well, keep on watching. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Catherine Bernier and at Skydive Vibes we are sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become better and safer skydivers. So if you're new here, well consider subscribing and click the little bell icon to be notified whenever we post new videos all about skydiving. So like I said, recently I did watch a lot of safety day videos online and one really stood out for me and it's the one of Dan Brodsky Schenfeld. Hello everyone. Dan Brodsky Chenfeld here, coming at you on Safety Day. Dan BC is a very experienced skydiver. He's been in the sport for many years. He has experienced a lot of different situations, some bad, some great like world records. So uh, he has a lot of experience to share and it amazes me how much he's geared towards safety. And he starts by saying, there's no such thing as a safe skydiver there's only safe skydives. And this is gold because whatever experience you have, however safe you can be as a skydiver, well, everything can still go wrong in a skydive, not related directly to you and what you do. He did share his skydive checklist to make sure that we are safe doing what we love most. And I must say that there's really one thing that really stood out for me and I could summarize it whole video with one word. First, let me go through his checklist and let me know if you do find the one word that I'm referring to, all right? First, ask yourself, are you ready to skydive? How do you feel? Are you tired? Hangover? What about the weather? Are you comfortable with it? Second, stay within your comfort zone. So try to be in jumps that are your level of difficulty. Don't try to push yourself because at some point you will endanger yourself and endanger everyone around you. Like Dan said, he's always ready to jump on a world record jump with 500 people on their belly, but he knows that he couldn't go on a four-way free fly formation because he would be a danger for everyone on the jump. And it's not about the jump number. Actually, for me, I realized that the jump number is not really synonym of experience. I think that also years in the sport matters because season from season, you're gonna have different weather type, different people on the drop zone, different environments. So even though you rush 500 jumps in a season, I wouldn't consider you as experimented than someone that have three years in the sport and 300 jumps. What really matters in terms of experience is your awareness during a jump and also your decision-making capability. Third, gear checks. And for that, you also need to know your equipment very well. If you're not packing your own canopy during your jump day, well, you are giving less attention to your equipment. So for that matter, gear checks are even more important. And when you do your gear checks, you got to expect that someone did something to your equipment and you got to find what it is. Even though if it's been five minutes since you did it, you didn't put it on your back right away, do a gear check just like if someone did something to your gear during those five minutes. Four, on the jump, you gotta be aware at all time. And even though we plan everything before going on the jump, well, expect something to go wrong and be ready to adapt. At breakoff, don't just turn yourself or throw yourself and track away the fastest you can. 
expect someone to be right behind you when you do that because you got to be aware even though during the track portion of the jump when it's time to deploy always be ready and aware and expect your canopy to actually turn in front of your friend skydiver fifth talking about deployment and upcoming malfunctions expect a malfunction on every jump that really resonated with me because that's how dan sees every jump he's always saying i'm gonna have a malfunction so am i ready to react whatever malfunction can be so go on a jump expecting that you're gonna have a malfunction and be ready for it this way the skydive will get safer for you and on a side note he did talk about one particular malfunction where uh, sometimes people are pulling too low and when he asks them what happened they're like oh i had a hard pull a hard pull well you got it out right and the guy said yeah it took me three times to pull so in the end that wasn't a malfunction because a malfunction would have caused you to actually deploy your reserve canopy because you wouldn't have been able to pull your pilot chute so if you were able on the third time Dan is saying like, you're not serious enough when it's time for you to pull. Again, you can expect a hard pull on every jump. So when it's time to deploy, pull as you mean it. It's actually the one thing that you gotta do to save your life on every jump. So pull like you wanna save your life, like you mean it at first. There's not gonna be such a thing as hard pull in the way that I just talked about. So are you starting to see a pattern and figuring out the one word that I wanna share with you by the end of this video? If so, let me know in the comments right away. Seven, when landing, be aware of people around you at all times. I know that many skydivers, when it's time to land, we are focused on our landing pattern, on our flare. So sometimes we're not giving enough attention to what's going on around us in the sky what's going on with the other skydivers that are trying to land also. But we have to stay aware of people around us. We got to expect people to fly in front of us. We got to expect people to be behind us when we, are, we want to do a maneuver. So try to be aware of what's going on around you. If when you're landing, there's too much traffic and you can't con concentrate on your landing, well, why not choose another landing area? And maybe your canopy is flying too fast when it's time to land. Maybe you should fly a more docile canopy. As you're expecting people to fly in front of you when you're on your final leg, well, give yourself enough margin to adjust and react without endangering people behind you. So at every jump, expect someone to cut you and have a plan ready to react accordingly in a smooth manner. For that, you can use your base leg. That's why this leg is important to be long enough and so this way you can adjust with the height you are at and what's happening in front of you so you could delay your last turn or a turn faster if needed but this would give you more room to react if something happens eight once you landed on your feet and smoothly expect that someone is about to land right on you so when you expect that what will be your first reaction turn around to see who's coming your way and this way you can also leave, leave room to people who are about to land in order to help them landing safe. Alright, so that was a quick rundown of his checklist. You can watch his full video by clicking right here, it's very interesting. But did you figure out the one word I talked about? Expect. Expectation. Expect that everything that can go wrong will go wrong on a skydive. If you are ready and have a plan to everything that you expect to happen, you're gonna experience safe skydives every time. So that really resonated with me. So in everything you do, you just got to remember one thing to be safe. One thing, expect. All right, I do, I'm doing my gear check. Oh, I expect that oh, someone did something to my rig. 
oh, I expect that when I'm gonna land, I don't want to put myself in the corner because I expect that someone will come in front of me. So for that matter, I'm gonna leave myself more room during my landing. I'm gonna expect someone to be behind me when it's time to track. So how will I react? I'll just make sure that I'm turning around more smoothly and be aware of what's happening because I expect things to happen during my skydive. So I really like that because it simplifies safety. And as Dan said, not being safe is not cool. What's cool is going to the bar at night, having a beer with your friends and laughing about what an awesome, awesome day of skydiving you had and everybody going home safe. That's cool. Well, for that, I say make safety great again. <laughs> All right, Skydivers, I hope you've liked this video and I hope this will bring you discussions online or in between yourself on the drop zone talking about safety day content. Let me know in the comments if you liked that video and if you did find out that one word that I talked about at the beginning. On that, guys, we are all in this together. Everyone is grounded for the moment. So prepare yourself for when the drop zones are gonna be opened. Get yourself some new gear, pack your gear, learn it find some content online. There's a lot of content there online. I'll, I'll try to feed you guys a little bit more too. So on that, make safety great again and blue skies for later.